Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning again, Rob. Great day. Maria Lawrence, an all-star. It's a great day to be here. Birthday of uh, Joe Strummer of The Clash, 1952. Now, who is he? Him. I just, of The Clash? I just said it was The Clash. The Clash. <laughs> Who's The Clash? The band playing right now. <laughs> yeah. On the... Did you know that, Maria? Just Google him, Bill. Did you know just that, Maria? Just Google him. Yeah. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm with it. Maria is also right now with four tickets I know. to the WVU Penn State game. I'm, I'm trying to poke the bear, Mike Height. Where are you, dude? Height's letting you stew. He, he he's he's playing the stew. long game here. But he knows how to play the game He as does. Well. He is at, yeah. You got two people who are competitive well, to a degree. Sounds like only one's really competitive. Yeah. The other one's kind of backed off He's right backed now. off, and maybe, that's okay. I mean, this, I, is way, this is Height's way of getting yeah. back some of that 2000 he spent to get killed by John Gilstrap in his latest In novel. the new book. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Which is out. Zero sum, by the way. My son bought the book and uh, sent me a picture of the page where uh, my name is in the book. But not your stage name, not your radio name, your real name. Yeah, well, the the name I use on the radio is just simply the next, it's a confirmation name. I was a Catholic, you had a confirmation name. My mother didn't believe in middle names. It's an odd thing to take a stand on. I know, it's a really weird thing. To I don't have a middle on. name either. It's just odd. <laughs> but uh, I think she didn't want me to be a serial killer or an assassin. You know how those folks always have a middle name? I don't think she wanted to risk it, so she didn't give us middle names, just to take that out of the equation. Anyway, four tickets to the WVU game here with Penn State, August the 31st. Every penny of the proceeds goes to the backpack program of Berkeley County. Right now, the bid for these four is $1,250. You can bid by posting your bid in our Facebook comment section on TV 10, uh, WNR Martinsburg, or you can call 263-6540 or 263-6586, and we'll take your bid that way, too. Right now, $1,250 is the bid. Let me pick up on that a little bit, Rob. You said all the money goes to the backpack program. And all the money in the backpack program goes to the food for the kids. There's no overhead. There's no um, uh, other charges. So all volunteers. Uh, all volunteers. So all the dollars goes to food for the kids. Yeah, very nice uh, group of people there, too. And uh, I uh, had to pay my property taxes recently, and I wrote the check. And it's like three weeks, a month goes by. The check still hasn't been deposited. I'm like, what's going on? So I called the tax office. And uh, they said to me, oh, hold on a second. I went into the safe, got the check out, and said, you didn't fill out the legal line. And I said, what's the legal line? Well, that's the line where you have to write out, you know, what is 1,005. Yeah, yeah well, you write the number, but you have to write it out in longhand. Well, I yeah. forgot to write it out in longhand. And the phone number on my check, which is so old, is the landline, which has been canceled. You haven't had it for a while, yeah. Right? So they're trying to call the landline. That's not in service. Like, we figured you would just call once you figured out that no one would, you know, was depositing your check. And I said... Uh, she said, you know, you're the second person we've had like that today. And I said, oh, that's good. I'm not the only absent-minded idiot out there. And she said, oh, no, there's a bunch of you. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I had an incident just a couple weeks ago. We had an event that um, a gentleman puts on for us each year at Hillbilly Heaven. Mm -hmm. It's a great event. Um, but this is a case where there was a substantial amount of checks in an envelope that got mailed from the Martinsburg post office. And it took a solid 12 to 15 days to get to the hospice um, address. Mm -hmm. And there was a little bit of panic going on and the gentleman and I are back and forth. We're talking about it the whole time. And I was outside walking around at lunchtime as I usually do. Someone came and got the mail and there were the checks in the mail that day, but 12 days. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's like eight miles. And you could have walked it there. And sort I know. Of, yeah. I know. I was tense. Our guest in this segment is Kara Keyes. She's a candidate for Jefferson County Commission out of the Shepherdstown District. Kara, good morning. Good morning, Rob, Maria, Bill. Yeah. Thanks for having me today. Is this your first time uh, on the radio doing an interview? It is. Oh, a lot of firsts. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. And Thank we're you. a tough group. So oh, okay. Yeah. Well, be nice to me. <laughs> and is this, your, is this your first time running for office? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. What got you motivated enough to decide to run for county commission in Jefferson? Well, that's a funny story. Uh, so I'm a lifelong volunteer. I moved to the county about eight years ago with my husband and then one child. Mm -hmm. uh, we've since had three more kids. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, big family. Um, I have been reading what's been going on over the past year or so. Um, and I thought to myself, maybe I would be well suited for this. Um, but 
I volunteer and I'm involved in the community. And I think I have a level of um, actionable things that people support me on regardless of their party. Um, so I think I have the right skill sets too. So when um, uh, a few folks came and um, promoted open commission spots um, to an organization that I attend, um, I first joined the planning commission um, mm -hmm. and that was in April of 2024. And I uh, was interviewed by the commission and ultimately appointed. Um, and then from there, I kind of got to know a little bit more. And um, when the um, decision was made, they did, um, Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee did um, put out a, a post um, saying that, you know, applicants are eligible to apply um, if they live in Shepherdstown Magisterial District or the Harperstown Magisterial District, mm -hmm. Harpers Ferry Mar Magisterial District. So um, I'm located in the Shepherdstown Magisterial District. So I put my application in and was interviewed on July 2nd and was um, approved and appointed from the Jefferson County Republican Executive Committee. Now, Kerr, there's been a lot of uh, moving parts in the Jefferson County Commission, and I, for one, am kind of confused. Uh, there are five seats, four of which are up for election this year. Is that correct? That's the Jackson seat, the old Jackson seat, the old Krause seat, the Jane Tab seat, and the seat that Pasha is currently occupying. Is that correct? That is correct. And for each one of those, there will be a Republican and a Democrat nominee that have that has been established correct and i believe um uh, there's also a mountain party for the charlestown um, for the charlestown so there's three um in that scene. yes because mr cook was it mr cook i think that was recently uh disqualified from serving in that office because he did not have 60 days of mountain yeah. party membership i think i read is what it was correct that's for the shepherdstown magisterial district that's where um the seat i'm going to be running for yeah. um the uh the mountain party candidate i believe is david tab um, who is running for the Charlestown seat. Charlestown. Mm -hmm. So of the, um, uh, of the five magisterial districts, uh, four will have, will be com uh, competitive seats. And, uh, right. and uh, one of them will be have three, the, other, the others will have two competitive seats. Correct. So this is an unusually large number of folks running for county commission. That's correct. Yeah. It's it's unprecedented. Yeah. Um, and we need to get back on track. I think that's one of um, one of my uh, goals for even doing this, putting my family in this, losing my privacy yeah. for what purpose? So if we can get our county back to um, a civil professional environment then i'm willing to to risk in uh, that loss of privacy well said i uh again been in berkeley kind of looking afar to jefferson county civility has been lost you're right and a lot of the uh, uh dialogue around the county commission you're so right yeah are any of those seats kara um you can't have more than one person from a certain district are you in that place um, that do you know, Bill, or do you know, yeah. Kara? By definition, you know they all about? are. They ha you have to have someone from different magisterial districts. So everybody who gets the top vote will be mm -hmm. placed in will will win the office. Then right. not some weird configuration of magisterial yes. districts. That's which, already been sorted out. At this okay, point okay. Here. What's yeah. interesting, though, is that even though we have five magisterial districts representing five areas in our county, mm -hmm. which I think is great if, you, if you're if you fully involved in that area, um, the whole county still votes for you. So even though I represent Shepherdstown Magisterial District, everyone that is a registered voter in Jefferson County can vote for all of the four of the five county right, commissions, yeah. which is very exciting we have a great opportunity to put in some new blood and uh get things back on track and also and i understand you've already been attacked by uh, uh one of the previous county commissioners as being not extreme enough Was that uh, yes you know you can't you can't please everybody and uh i think i'm going to lead with professionalism and civility mm -hmm. and that is why i'm doing it and i'm going to stick to my guns yeah. And tell us what your guns are, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think there's uh, four keys to getting back on track. So, okay. care keys. Uh, common sense, mm -hmm. civility and professionalism, transparency, having more open forums for residents, and then the last thing is sustainable growth. 
Uh, the last one is something that I think my professional background and my skill sets will actually bring something to the table, which I think is very important for voters to understand. Electing someone based on your party and lack of skill sets to actually serve the county in a professional manner will impact the county. And what is your background? Um, so I am a commercial uh, and land use appraiser. Um, so I appraise all types of commercial and agricultural properties, conservation easements in three states. And I've been doing that for about um, 10 years. So I'm certified. Um, I'm a certified general appraiser in Maryland, West Virginia, and Virginia. So Jefferson County is just one of the many areas that I do work in. Um, um, and I have a lot of really good ideas of ways that we can tweak things. I've listened to residents. I understand a lot of concerns are we're growing fast. We're growing. There's there's a, f a, a lot of um, <coughs> strong opinions about how we're growing. And so I think I can make some great tweaks to our zoning ordinance and have open more open forums and learn what people want in our county. It's interesting that you have experience in that because, as you well know, solar is a big issue in Jefferson County and solar farms appear to be a concern for people who have land around those solar farms in terms of loss of land value, Correct. resale value, making it more difficult to sell your house or whatever. Tell us about that because you're a certified appraiser. Yes, sir. So um, that's actually a, 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 an appraisal term. It's called external obsolescence. And that's when there's something outside of your property that could negatively impact the value of your own property. So though as a Republican, I support property rights, some of these solar farms could have the potential to have that damaging effect on a property of another property. So there's a balance that needs to be had, um, fairness. So with solar, there's five current pending projects. Um, with zoning ordinance, when something is considered a permitted use and developers come in or whomever, they start down that path of approval. Legally, there's not a lot that you can do to those pending projects if something is an allowed use. So in 2021, that was adopted by the rural zoning uh, for Jefferson County to have solar farming in that zoning ordinance. So, um, you know, I'm coming in in 2024, and so I'd like to modify that moving forward, and I think the, the voters would like that. Um, but I want to make it clear that I can't promise anything about the the pending projects because quite frankly there's nothing legally I can do and when you in Jefferson County has zoning yes, sir. so w when you live in a zoned community you do give up some of your property rights because of the nature of zoning Correct. zoning says this area of the county is agricultural this area is industrial this area is residential that's the nature of zoning Correct. that's what makes it also very tricky when you believe in personal property rights correct there is a balance that has to be had, but there's also exceptions in zoning. I live in a community that is zoned. The area behind me was agricultural. Those who've listened to this show for years are sick of me talking about this, by the way. The area behind me was zoned agricultural. The developer came in. Somehow he got the county commission to change the, the, the zoning to residential. And the farmer who had a farm that died, his family didn't want to farm. It was great for them. They sold their land. They built a bunch of houses right. on what used to be a farm. That's right. what's behind me now. Tore down a bunch of trees, all that fun stuff. Right. That's the nature of, of zoning as well. It can be changed. Right. It is flexible. It is flexible, but there's more red tape that you have to go through. You'd have to go through approvals within commissions. Mm -hmm. The county commission would have to vote to approve something. So I, I like zoning. Um, I think um, coming from, you know, I, I came from Maryland eight years ago. Um, I think zoning can serve a really good purpose mm -hmm. if it's done well. Um, it can be done fairly to all concerned. And so I do think um, that is something that we should consider. Now, now um, with Berkeley County, because you don't have zoning ordinance, mm -hmm. it's it, it can anything could happen anywhere in a much easier capacity than than in Jefferson County. And you could think of that as a good thing or a bad thing. Um, my personal belief is I think people move to Jefferson County to have that beautiful country roads and the 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 mountain views and so I do want to have that balance mm -hmm. and to be fair um, so personally I think um, I'm with my background also in conservation I'd like to have a better um, better mix between our growth which is going to happen whether I like it or not or whomever 
You um, moved here, right? I moved here. That's yeah, growth, growth is going to happen, yeah. and we we are on an uptrend. So, and and there is thousands of approved um, dwellings that are being constructed over the next few years that are already approved. So that's going to happen. We know that it's a known quantity. So, um, how do we how do we make that a better cohesiveness with our conservation areas? How do we make sure that we're growing in areas that make sense and conserving areas that make sense? So, my my just common sense background of uh, and profession is hey, how we could be focusing our growth along the 349 stretch where we have the infrastructure in place where we have we we have services in place it would be easier for first responders to get to we have the roads um, and uh, protecting our backcountry roads so I feel like that's a, a middle ground that might work well for um, for Jefferson County. You, you talked about uh, solar a few minutes ago. I said you would you'd like to probably tweak future uh, land use ordinance to mm -hmm. accommodate or to limit solar. Exactly what would you do? Well, well I would need to get um, the backing of the commission. Yeah, no, so I mean, but what would you propose? I would propose, so right now we have a permitted use. It's wide open. Um, what we could do is make it a conditional use. So it, uh, it increases oversight. Um, there's a lot of things we could do. That's my first suggestion. And that allows us to, I would like to have site plan approvals of each solar farm. I would like to look at each land independently and how it impacts other neighbors. If it wraps around a, a, a five acre property and that, that five acre property, it's not fair. I think that's something that should be talked about. Um, if there's no buffers or there should be increased buffers depending on the, the terrain and um, the road frontage that it might be nearby, I think every case should be looked at differently. So that would be the conditional use aspect. Yes, so sir. each one would be uniquely examined. Exactly. So, yeah. so. What has been um, either the most eye-opening or surprising? I mean, obviously you're a sort of a newcomer to the Planning Commission, but has there been anything that you went in there and went, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, anything like that? I'm just sort of curious because, again, you hear things yeah. about the Planning Commission. And you're like. So on the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. not the. Um, I think. Well, I'm the only female that's on the Planning Commission. So it's um, it's unique. I think I offer a different Been perspective. There, done yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Um, Bill, I think we're not being liked a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> you all guys week, are great too. All week, gentlemen. Just 12, saying. 1250, Maria. 1250. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, Somebody's going to come in at 1251. Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, no, you're fine. I think... Um, Nothing too too much. I think what was interesting, my second meeting or so, um, it, there was a very very um, very heated discussion over a new development that was being proposed, um, which it was my second meeting. I'm new to this, and I'm trying to be fair, and and so I'm looking at it um, from both angles, and um, I was the one dissenting vote um, for um, some. Um, for some special exceptions that they were asking. Um, and, it, and it was really just back to my platform. You know, I, I like growth in certain areas and sometimes it doesn't make sense and I, I wanna stick to that. Um, so I was the one dissenting vote and I think it gave me a little bit of credibility now like moving forward, now that I'm running for county commission, people know that I'm gonna look at each thing with fresh, a fresh perspective. Um, the other thing that's surprising too is um, without getting too deep into it, uh, the level of, um, um, I guess, people want, now that I'm new, they want me to pick a side immediately. They want to put me in a box. They're going to label me one person, someone's someone's person in this, you know. And so it's uh, interesting. I, I fully am prepared to stay in my lane and to do what I think is right for this county and be professional. So um, I plan on doing that. You mentioned earlier and that zoning and Berkeley County does not have zoning. Jefferson County does. A driver, I think, for development is that of water, the availability of water. That's part of it. And if you pull away from the supply of the Potomac River, then we're on a very fickle, uh, I think, a very undependable source of water. Does Jefferson County and Berkeley County put in and and 
uh, aquifer management uh, years or so ago before a large development was built. Uh, they had to do a water budget, not only for today, but had to look back historical. Right. That would ensure that a new development would not penalize an existing homeowner mm -hmm. by all of a sudden not having enough water. Right. Does Jeff Jefferson County, I do not think, has anything like that. Is that are you familiar with what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. I don't think they have done anything recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, one of the other things that impacts growth, too, is yeah. um, impact fees. Yes. And so Berkeley County does not, to my knowledge, does not have impact fees. We will. We you will. will. Yeah. The legislator gave us authority just recently. And okay. uh, if they have not if they have not been implemented, they will be in the next few weeks. Few oh, months. good. Yeah. That's really okay. good. Um, and, and really, that just pays for the impact of that 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 lot or townhouse. Um, but haven't they been become kind of a political football in Ber in Jefferson County for example i think one dollar is given to the schools yes something some ridiculously small small number yes and i think to my knowledge um the current county commission is uh working on a, a study to understand a a number figure of impact that yeah. should be addressed in our yeah. county um and i think honestly most of the i think all eight or nine i can speak for maybe eight of them from what i've heard is all the folks running do support impact fees so i think that's a bipartisan support well, yeah we'll bill we're done okay sorry let's see i got that clock there for you buddy <laughs> hey we, i was so involved in this i know you were <laughs> we gotta take our final break here and back with the final 50 seconds after we do these with kara keys running for county commission in jefferson hello